Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, let's talk about the latest bombshell to rock the House of Windsor, Princess Anne's shocking move to seize Prince Harry's trust fund just as he's about to hit the big four to zero. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of 40th birthday presents, financial takeover by your aunt isn't exactly at the top of the list. But here we are, in a world where royal drama never seems to take a day off. First things first, let's break down what's actually happened here. According to the grapevine, and by grapevine, I mean those ever-reliable anonymous palace sources, Princess Anne has invoked some obscure clause in the trust fund set up by the late Princess Diana for her sons. This clause apparently gives her the power to take control of Harry's portion if he's deemed unstable or unfit to manage it himself. Talk about a royal power move. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this one. I mean, we're talking about a trust fund worth a cool 10 million pounds. That's not exactly chump change, even by royal standards. This was Diana's way of making sure her boys would be taken care of, a mother's love extending beyond the grave. And now, on what should be a milestone celebration for Harry, it's being yanked away faster than you can say God save the Queen. But let's dig a little deeper, shall we? Because this isn't just about money. Oh no, this is about family dynamics, power plays, and the ever-present specter of royal protocol. The official line seems to be that there are growing concerns about Harry's mental state and decision-making. Now, I'm no therapist, but I can't help but wonder, is moving to California and speaking your mind really a sign of instability, or is it just called living your life? Let's face it, Harry's been through the ringer, from losing his mother at a young age to the constant scrutiny of the public eye, to falling in love with someone who didn't quite fit the royal mold, it's enough to make anyone want to pack up and head for sunnier shores. And that's exactly what he did. But apparently, in the eyes of the royal family, choosing your own path is tantamount to spiraling out of control. Now, I'm not saying Harry's perfect. Lord knows he's had his fair share of missteps and controversies, but stripping him of his inheritance, that seems like a nuclear option if I've ever seen one. It's like grounding a 40-year-old man for staying out past curfew. It just doesn't quite add up. And let's talk about the timing for a second. Harry's 40th birthday should be a time of celebration, of reflection on the man he's become and the life he's built. Instead, he's being hit with this financial gut punch. It's like getting a parking ticket on your wedding day. It just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. But here's where it gets really interesting, folks. This move by Princess Anne isn't just about Harry. It's a statement to the world about the power dynamics within the royal family. It's saying, you can leave, but you can't escape. We still hold the purse strings. It's a reminder that in the Game of Thrones, the real-life version, not the one with dragons, every move has consequences. Now, let's consider Princess Anne for a moment. Known for her no-nonsense approach and dedication to duty, she's always been something of a dark horse in the royal family. Not one for scandal or the limelight, she's quietly gone about her business for decades. So for her to make such a bold move, that speaks volumes. It suggests that this decision wasn't made lightly, that there's more going on behind those palace walls than we mere mortals are privy to. But here's the thing that's really got me scratching my head. What exactly are they afraid of? That Harry's going to blow the money on avocado toast and oat milk lats? That he'll fund a tell-all documentary series about his royal upbringing? Oh wait, he already did that. Or is it simply that they can't stand the idea of him having this connection to Diana, this piece of her legacy that exists outside their control? Because let's be real, this trust fund isn't just about money. It's a tangible link to a mother who was taken far too soon. It's a reminder of Diana's love, her foresight, her desire to protect her children even when she couldn't be there herself. By taking control of it, the royal family isn't just seizing assets, they're severing an emotional tie. And that, my friends, is where this whole situation goes from merely controversial to downright heartbreaking. Now, I can already hear the royalists among you crying foul, but the monarchy has to protect itself. You might say, Harry's actions have been detrimental to the crown. And look, I get it. 
The royal family is an institution, and institutions have a vested interest in self-preservation. But at what cost? At what point does protecting the crown mean sacrificing the very family values it's supposed to represent? Let's not forget, this is the same royal family that's weathered countless storms over the years, from abdications to divorces, from toe-sucking scandals to Prince Andrew situations. And boy, is that a whole other can of worms. They've seen it all. So why is Harry's California adventure the straw that breaks the camel's back? Is it because he dared to speak out, because he chose love over duty? Or is it simply because he refused to play by the rules of a game he never asked to be part of? And let's talk about those rules for a second, shall we? Because the monarchy loves its protocols, its traditions, its way things have always been done. But here's the kicker. Times change. The world moves on. What worked for previous generations might not cut it in the age of social media and global scrutiny. Maybe, just maybe, Harry's instability is actually a sign of growth, of adaptation to a changing world. But change is scary, especially for an institution as old as the British monarchy. Now, I'm not saying Harry and Meghan are blameless in all this. Their tell-all interviews and public statements have certainly stirred the pot. But isn't that what we want from public figures? Honesty. Authenticity. A willingness to speak truth to power. Or do we only want that when it doesn't ruffle too many feathers? But let's bring it back to the money, because at the end of the day, that's what this move is about. By taking control of the trust, Princess Anne and the royal family are sending a clear message. Fall in line, or face the consequences. It's a power play, pure and simple. And it's one that's likely to backfire spectacularly. Because here's the thing. Harry's already out. He's already stepped away from royal duties, already built a life outside the gilded cage of monarchy. So what leverage does this really give them? If anything, it's likely to push him further away, to cement his resolve to forge his own path. And in the court of public opinion? Well, let's just say it doesn't paint the royals in the most flattering light. Think about it. What's the narrative here? A grieving son, trying to honor his mother's memory and protect his own family, has his inheritance stripped away by the very people who should be supporting him. It's not exactly the stuff of fairy tales, is it? It's more like something out of a Shakespeare tragedy, all family drama and power struggles and painful betrayals. And let's not forget the wider implications of this move. What message does it send to other younger royals who might be questioning their place in the monarchy? It's essentially saying, step out of line and we'll cut you off. That's not exactly a great recruitment strategy for the next generation of royals, is it? But perhaps the most tragic aspect of all this is what it says about family. Because strip away the titles, the palaces, the pomp and circumstance, and what do you have? A family. A dysfunctional, complicated, very public family. But a family nonetheless. And families are supposed to support each other, to have each other's backs, to love unconditionally. This move. It's the opposite of all that. It's saying, our institution is more important than our blood ties. It's prioritizing the crown over the person. And while that might be the royal way, it's a pretty sad indictment of what the monarchy has become. So where do we go from here? Well, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, because gambling is frowned upon in polite society, don't you know? I'd say this isn't the end of the story. Harry's not likely to take this lying down. We can probably expect some sort of response. Maybe another interview, maybe legal action, maybe just a strongly worded statement about family and loyalty and the importance of mental health. And the royal family, well, they'll do what they always do. Keep calm and carry on. They'll wave from balconies and cut ribbons and pretend everything's fine. But behind those palace walls, I'd wager there are some pretty heated discussions going on. As for Princess Anne, she's likely to retreat back into her usual low-profile role. But make no mistake, this move has cemented her position as a major player in the royal family. She's shown she's willing to make the tough calls, to be the bad guy, if that's what she thinks is necessary to protect the institution. But at what cost? That's the question that keeps nagging at me. Because sure, they might have control of the money now. They might have asserted their authority and shown Harry who's boss. But have they gained anything, really? Or have they just lost a son? 
a brother, a nephew, perhaps for good this time. In the end, this whole saga is a reminder of the pressure cooker that is royal life. It's a world where every action is scrutinized, where duty often comes before personal happiness, where the weight of centuries of tradition bears down on every decision. And sometimes that pressure creates diamonds, but other times it just leaves a whole lot of broken pieces. So here we are, watching this royal drama unfold like some kind of real-life soap opera. It's got all the elements, money, power, family betrayal. If it were fiction, we'd probably say it was too far-fetched. But as they say, truth is often stranger than fiction. As we wait to see how this all plays out, one thing's for certain. The royal family will never be the same. The fairy tale image has well and truly shattered, replaced by something far more complex and human. And maybe, just maybe, that's not such a bad thing. Because at the end of the day, they're just people. Flawed. Complicated struggling people, trying to navigate family dynamics in the most public arena possible. So what's the takeaway from all this? Maybe it's that money can't buy happiness or family unity. Maybe it's that institutions will always prioritize self-preservation over individual needs. Or maybe it's simply that growing up royal isn't all it's cracked up to be. Whatever lessons we draw from this latest royal scandal, one thing's for sure. It's going to be one heck of a chapter in the history books. And as for Harry, well, he might be down a trust fund, but something tells me he's not out for the count just yet. After all, if there's one thing the Windsors are good at, it's bouncing back from adversity. So grab your popcorn, folks, because this royal drama is far from over. And who knows, maybe by the time Harry hits 50, they'll be having a right royal knees up together. Laughing about that time, Aunt Anne sees the trust fund. Stranger things have happened in the wonderful wacky world of Windsor. So stay tuned, my friends, because if there's one thing I've learned from watching the Royals, it's that the drama never stops, and neither do I. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the Royal family. Thank you.